Hey everybody, welcome to Goshen Prepping. Thanks for joining us. Space weapons, space nuclear weapons, Russian nuclear space weapons. It's all over in the news. And this is interesting because when we look at as far as things attacking the United States, obviously we want to be able to look at the entire scenario of can we be hit by nuclear weapons? Can they do it stealthily? Obviously, an ICBM coming across can easily be detected, or pretty easily, by the way. NORAD says they can't always detect them. But what happens if they're actually launched from space? Let me show you a couple articles and some things how it's going to impact us we need to take very seriously. Number one, Russia's nuclear satellite weapon raises concern in Washington, for sure. The first key is they actually just announced it on February 16th, but they'd known about it for a while. And more specifically, they say it is a new Russian weapon that was nuclear designed to be used in space to be taking out satellites, an anti-satellite weapon. I kind of question this, by the way. And the reason I question that is because we already have anti-satellite weapons, and so do the Russians, and so does China. Literally, we can have a jet that can shoot a missile up and take out satellites. So why are we putting, or at least why are the Russians now putting nuclear weapons in space to take out satellites? I don't know. Stick with us. You'll see why that's probably not the case. And it's very interesting. Kirby said that he wants to make it clear, as far as U.S. intelligence can tell, the new Russian weapon can only attack targets in space and not launch attacks against Earth. Why? Why? I mean, let me put it this way. When it comes to nuclear, when it comes to simply having a ICBM, they're already in space anyway, at least suborbit, and they can free fall, I and mean, we can actually guide them, but they free fall to a city or a military base, whatever the case may be. Why couldn't that be what's put in space and easily send it down to Earth, into the United States to attack? That's my first question, but they say, you know, as far as we can tell, they can't do that. They already can do that. That's what ICBMs and SLBMs are all about. And more specifically, what they're saying is this puts the West in a very tight spot because making communications very vulnerable. And here's why from this article from the New York Post, how Russia would use space nukes to cripple the U.S. and the world. It says there's more than 5,500 known satellites orbiting the Earth, 3,500 American, 541 Chinese, 172 Russian. They carry internet signals, communications, and GPS. And here's what their fear is. I mean, this is a fear of mine too, but it goes beyond this. Knocking out these satellites with a nuclear explosion would ground drones, cut off troops, and even blind an entire nation to a first strike attack. And that's what I think is happening here. A first strike attack. And that's the biggest fear I have. Because the reason the Russians haven't nuked America, and the reason why America hasn't nuked the Russians, or pick on any nuclear power, is because of this nuclear deterrence that if we launch theirs, we launch ours, and they kill back and forth, and mankind's dead on the planet. Unless, unless a country can find a way to take out the other country's nukes first, take them all out, then suddenly now you have one nuclear power, think about it that way, and they basically would rule and do as they will to attack or not attack, but they hold all the cards. So that's the biggest thing when you see this. They're trying to put across that these spaced nuclear weapons are only to take out other satellites, which would blind us from incoming ICBMs. And I'm not discounting that. That certainly could happen. But I want to argue there might be more to it than this for the fact that, you know what, they say, oh, by the way, you can't hit ground targets with these. We don't think so. Why would you even bring that up? Because obviously they can. That's how ICBMs work. And even more so, that would be a perfect first strike attack. Because understand that NORAD even can't pick up all ICBMs coming across the poles or from submarine bases or submarines, you know, that is under the water to the United States. How are they going to pick up basically some kind of vehicle that just randomly re-entries into Earth? I mean, we can see them ahead of time. For example, if there's a satellite and its orbit is decaying, every time it passes, it gets closer and closer to Earth. And they say, you know what, we think it's going to hit Earth about this time. You know, we're not sure where. But even the telemetry, they have a very difficult time seeing exactly when and exactly where. What happens if there's some kind of Russian space weapon up there that purposely fires its rocket so it drops specifically onto our nuclear sponge? So we have in the center of our country all the places where we have our nuclear silos, even more specifically, specific bases, like, for example, Whiteman's Air Force Base in Missouri, that those are a big chunk of our nuclear weapons come from. A few very strategically placed weapons on those areas could, in essence, wipe out the majority of the United States sending nuclear missiles. Therefore, again, look, now our adversaries are holding all the cards. We always have submarines, but guess what? If they do take out the satellite simultaneously, we are blind as a bat. 
I can see why they're they're terrified about this. But just simply taking out other satellites, that's only half of it. The other half is also now basically dropping, practically speaking, undetectable nukes on specific areas in the country very rapidly so we would not have time to be able to respond, basically send our missiles across to. Let's look at a couple more articles. A little bit more on the political side. The White House says it's tracking the Russian space weapons. They actually violate a nuclear arms treaty. For that, we have an outer space treaty that does not allow this. But there it is again. But, you know, it's actually believed to target satellites and not human beings on Earth. Are you familiar with that little trick when people are caught in lies, by the way? You didn't even mention anything and suddenly say, oh, I don't think these are actually meant to actually kill people on the planet. Who asked? Who said that? I mean, granted, the public will worry about this. But it's funny how they continuously keep pushing that this is not what it is, when in reality, they even admitted they don't know for sure. And here's something I want to look at very quickly. Here's what could happen if Putin launches a nuclear bomb in space, or into space, I guess I want to put it that way. A giant ball of plasma erupting above them, particles of radiation raining down on the atmosphere. And of course, this brings up the biggest thing that we worry about also are EMPs. Now, an actual nuclear weapon detonated in space will not cause a massive EMP. It actually has to be done in our upper atmosphere, a location called the ionosphere, full of ions, and those ions take part in the explosion, making the EMP hit Earth. So either A, it actually rains down into the ionosphere, disrupting satellites and other problems too, or B, just drop that weapon a little bit, boom, and now you set off a few of those in the ionosphere, and EMP down goes the United States. And putting it again here, the most powerful blast of solar radiation have the ability to knock out communications. That's the biggest thing they worry about. And communications is a big thing, I'm not gonna lie. But our power grid is a huger thing, it's a bigger thing. Because if we see an EMP hitting the, the grid system from the upper atmosphere, it could easily take out our power overall. We will still have military, by the way, and very limited government, but that's not the point because the rest of the people, all the dangers that comes into put that, and we'll talk about that in this next video, by the way, um, we see specifically people turning into chaos, fighting each other, killing you for your corned beef hash, etc. So check out this video and say basically how that can happen. And this thing with Russians launching nukes in space is a very serious thing. And it's something we need to consider all contingencies, including dropping the, the nukes from above and starting World War III. Thanks for watching.